recent trip to Paris, we decided to take a day trip out to the Palace of Versailles to check it out. Versailles is about nine miles away, so it's a super easy train ride and day trip from Paris. Time for breakfast. Oh, the first croissant on our last day. What are we thinking? Second last day. Mm, you're right. You're all right. right. Boy, you can video it all you want. <laughs> he cannot wait. Yeah, really yeah, buttery. Man, that's good. In Versailles, decided to take a little day trip from Paris to come check out the Palace of Versailles. This is something that neither one of us have ever done here, so I'm super excited to go check it out. We got their passport ticket, which kind of gives you access to everything, um, but we might do like a couple add ons. But excited to walk around Versailles. If you guys want to see what it's like to come and visit Versailles from Paris for the day, then just keep on watching. I'll show you around. It was super easy to get here. We took the RERC train, um, cost like almost a little bit under eight euros, and uh, we were here in like cheap, easy, simple to get here. You don't have to take a transfer or anything. Just use public transportation like everyone else does. You ready to do this? Let's do it. It's awesome water bottle purchase. Come in handy. Collapsible water bottle purchase. Let's see how the royal drinking water is. It's water. I mean, look at this. That's crazy, all that gold. This place is just so huge. All right, here's a little history lesson. Versailles actually had pretty humble beginnings. Before this palace was built, King Louis XIII built a small hunting lodge on these grounds as he loved to come here to hunt. Eventually, he rebuilt the structure into what is the basis of the palace we see today. But it wasn't until King Louis XIV that the palace of Versailles that we see right now took shape. Louis XIV took on the role of architect himself and built a masterpiece with which he would forever be associated. Each subsequent king added on a bit more to the palace, as well as other structures and areas throughout the grounds. The palace and other estates were in use as a residence for each king and, in Napoleon's case, emperor, to varying degrees until 1833 when King Louis Philippe decided to make Versailles a museum to all the glories of France and as a means to reconcile the French people after the revolution. This is the war room which leads into the Hall of Mirrors, one of the most famous rooms in Versailles. The hall and its adjoining salons was intended to illustrate the power of the absolutist monarch Louis XIV. At the time, mirrors were a great luxury, so having 357 mirrors was definitely a flex on the Venetians, who at the time had a monopoly on mirror manufacturing. The hall of mirrors. It's <laughs> really freaking cool. Times like this, I wish I had my ball gown on me. It's like how over the top it is, it's just insane. Imagine this just being your house. The Hall of Mirrors is also the location where the Treaty of Versailles was signed in 1918, ending the First World War. Coincidentally, it was also the location of the Declaration of the German Empire just 47 years earlier in 1871. The Queen's Chambers had to be my favorite of all the rooms. It is left the way that it was decorated for Marie Antoinette. They had these great free audio guides that came in multiple languages that were so handy to have throughout our visit. It was information overload for sure, but it was cool to learn about what we were seeing at our own pace. We're out in the gardens now. It took us about an hour, a little over an hour to go through all the little salons and apartments inside. Um, and it was very, very claustrophobic sometimes. I don't know if it's normal, but there's a lot of like, I think children's, school children's field trips going on today. So there's a lot of groups of small children, their teachers. If you're coming during high season, expect for it to be like, this is a lot of people. There were some areas where it was like a little bit more open, but I'm really happy to be outside 
in these wide open beautiful spaces because I don't know if it's just from like COVID times and just not being used to being in like really tight crowds like that but ooh, I was getting a little claustrophobic so just something to keep in mind uh, if you're planning your visit here. We're gonna go try to get in line to rent a golf cart. You can get like a separate little ticket to rent golf carts to ride around the grounds or they have like a little small train that will take you around as well. So we're gonna look into that so we can see more in a quicker amount of time because this place is really, really huge. And we are kind of tired because we've been walking around Europe for the last two weeks. ways to get around Versailles more efficiently. You can do the small train, which is eight euros 50 for a full price and that gets you around everywhere. Or you can opt for a golf cart in which you can be sort of in control of your adventure at Versailles. For 38 euros for the first hour and nine euros 50 for each subsequent 15 minute period. How long have we been in this line? Uh, I think 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad. Do I go right or do I go straight? Straight. Hey! Got my new whip. It doesn't go very fast. I'm perfect. Don't. Well, I don't think we need to go any faster. I have a need for speed. Uh, yeah, you do. I like the music that they play. It's very. Well, I do like the music too. Side appropriate. And I thought the palace was big. You could seriously get lost in these gardens all day. They are so expansive and massive. Well, this is fun. You see something, you tell me. Okay. I literally said, looks like that guy has some wine. And Nate was like, what? Peter, where's the wine? <laughs> Damn right it was. It was right around this time we were very hungry for lunch. They have two options in the garden. This cafe that's been here for a very long time was very cute, definitely a little pricier, or they have this little takeaway cafe that was a quicker, more affordable option. If you're on a time crunch like we are, don't go to the restaurant. Grab a little takeaway wine and paninis. They have sandwiches and ice cream and stuff at this little stand. In case you can't tell, it's bumpy. Like you by no means have to rent a golf cart or take the train. I saw plenty of people on foot walking. There were lots of people who rented bikes. So there's so many different options of getting around Versailles depending on how you would like to experience it and your price point. The first stop we made was to the Petit Trianon. It's kind of nice that the golf cart comes with like a built-in audio guide for where you are. It's pretty neat. This chateau was originally built for King Louis XV's longtime mistress, Madame de Pompadour, but it's most known as a small estate that Louis XVI gave his wife, Marie Antoinette, to use for her own enjoyment. Where are you going? I don't know, that's pretty Oh, it looks dark. Cool. Feels really nice and cool. This is a relatively small chateau and most of it is decorated very modestly and in sort of a rustic style. Definitely worth visiting, but what is really worth visiting here are the gardens and grounds around, which we didn't really get to explore too much because we didn't want to spend too much time and it was also really hot that day. Next, we visited the Grand Trianon, which is a bigger chateau in the estate of Trianon that was the residence of several different French monarchs. It was often used as a little bit of an escape away from the stiffness and the etiquette of the French court where they would have guests to sort of relax a little bit more. Many of the furnishings you'll see here were from Napoleon's time as this was one of his residences of choice. I mean, it's like at some point, how many paintings and fancy rooms can you take in? It's a lot. It's like overload of yeah, opulence. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's mind blowing. It's absolutely, this isn't even, we're in the Grand Trianon yet. This isn't even the main palace. It's really crazy. Which were intended to heighten the king's interest in his navy, which were also used for nautical parties. After riding around in the golf cart for a while, we decided to take it back since it does get a little bit pricey after you have it for a while and we wanted to go and either row some of the boats or get some bikes or explore a little bit more at our leisure.
The only con about the golf carts is where you want them is way up at the top near the palace. But then when you want to go down near the Grand Canal and get bikes and rent boats and stuff, it's not close. So you kind of have to like park your golf cart and it, you're still on the clock essentially for your golf cart rental. So we ditched our golf cart and now we're just walking down the main golf cart's pathway. Golf cart is very worth it, especially if you have a passport that gets you to all the different areas. Because um, the Grand Trianon and the Petite Trianon is really far away. And to get there on flight, it would have taken pretty long to walk. So, golf cart's very worth it, but recommend using the golf cart, going to those farther places, driving around, and then taking it back, walking down the main pathway if you want to go ahead and get bikes or a boat. That way, you're not like spending money on the golf cart while you're on the boat or the, the bike, and also gives you the lay of the land when you ride around the golf cart first. It's really worth it. We had it for two hours, cost us 76 euros. I think we got to see a lot more stuff in a very short amount of time that we wouldn't have been able to do without it. You can save some money and get the five euro split bottle of wine instead of sitting at the cafe. That's, that's the hack. We're gonna go row some boats now. It's like a Roomba, but it's a lawnmower. That's pretty cool. Nate wanted me to include this. Been a minute. You got this? Yeah, I yeah. do. You're eating your sleeve again, babe. <laughs> so cool. Look like you know what you're doing, though. Put the blades down, push forward, and it's out. <laughs> I've only seen it on TV. It's kind of crazy. Just rowing on the Grand Canal, chilling on the water like they used to do back in the day. I got my strong man. Should I try it? I'm gonna do this. Stay center. Uh huh. And low. I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring. This is no joke. These oars are heavy. Yeah. Gotta get the like motion though. Am I good behind me? Well, you're left. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you're hanging in there. You did alright. How you feeling? Now you're getting it. Okay. I think I got the rhythm down. Now you get the rhythm. It's great. I get to chill, get sunburned, meet lady. Join the rowing team when we get back home. I feel like I need gloves or something. Legit. There you go. Boom. Boom. Boom! Yep. Nope. Keep up. Nope. Now you splashed my bag that was completely dry. Thanks. Your camera's in there, so I can't check that. Maybe I should take over. How do you feel? Woo! You can feel it in the, uh, the old deltoids. The trapezius and the deltoids? Which are ruined. Spinning around. Oh! oh that felt not good. Bad. It felt good, actually. Take away wine from the shop. Why not? Rosé all day. Here's the deal, you can go all the way down there and go left and right. Yeah, but you'd be on this for a long time. It would take a long time to get back if you went all the way down there and went left and right. So you'd have to be really committed to rowing. But it is cool to be out here. This is where they had all, they had a bunch of different boats on this water. One of the French kings, I can't remember which one. I think Louis XIV. Yeah, he had like gondolas with Venetian gondoliers, rowing them, all kinds of different ships that they had out here. So it's kind of cool to get to experience this, like how they might have done back then. Not as fancy, because a Venetian gondola would have been way cooler, but we'll take a rowboat. What's up, Ducky? One thing is for sure, when you come here in the summer, bring a water bottle, you can refill it at the entrance like we did in the beginning of the video. Bring a hat, bring sunscreen. You're gonna need all of it because it is a lot of direct sunlight here. Not a whole lot of shade when you're outside. So we barely had enough sunscreen to get us by and maybe it's debatable. That's why we're kind of like <laughs> hustling to uh, get out. Hopefully we're okay on the skin. I definitely come prepared for it to be hot and very, very sunny when you're visiting here if you're coming during the summer. We had the passport which gets you everywhere, but we scanned it three times in the section where you come in and out of the, the paid area and then you go into the public park and then come back and our ticket kind of went weird. They let us through anyway, but keep that in mind because we went through once in the golf carts and then came back, that was twice. 
And then we gave the golf cart back and walked back and they scammed us a third time. That was kind of the issue. So I don't really know exactly what that means, but I guess keep that in mind if you're visiting. Maybe the passport can only be scanned so many times when you're coming out of that area. After a long day at Versailles, we only had two decisions. Take the short walk back to the train station and go back to Paris, or go into the town and enjoy a bite and some spritzes before we departed. I think you guys know what we chose. We went down this street, found this little cafe, got us some spritzes and a pizza because we were starving, and it was wonderful. Slice it up. Hope you enjoyed our little day trip vlog to Versailles. Stay tuned because I will be sharing our adventures in Paris very soon and maybe it's in the future and it's already done so you can check it out right here. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!